In this video, I'm going to show you how to sweep unwanted frequencies out of this acoustic guitar take. Now, what that means is oftentimes, and this can be due to the microphone or the instrument or any combination of the entire signal chain, there may be a couple of frequencies that just kind of stand out and be maybe taking away from the warmth and body of the instrument. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find a frequency like that and how to edit it so that you can really bring forth the kind of tone in that instrument that you really want. Let's take a listen to this guitar track. Now, it sounds really good. There is one frequency that I can hear that's a little high pitched and a little ringy. So we're going to go in, find that frequency, and we're going to sweep it out. Here I have my, my note editor window open. I'm going to come up to my top left corner here, and I'm going to close it by selecting it. Now all I have is my tracks view. But next to the note editor is the sound editor option. Just open it up. And here we have a general frequency fingerprint graph representation of the overall tonality of that instrument. And watch as I play this back. You see that each one of these frequency bands has a little dark ball that bounces and moves with the sonic energy of this performance. Okay, so to get started, what I like to do is create a cycle range, for example. That means audio is going to loop in one area. And that way I don't have to keep chasing the... Um, playback head here. So let me drag in my timeline somewhere between uh, 13 and 18 and do something like that. And I can double click that to deactivate it or double click it again to reactivate it. That's a handy little trick right there. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is I, what I'm looking for in this example is a high kind of high mid rangey ringy tonality. And right off the bat, I can see I've got a bump somewhere here right before 800 hertz. Everybody see this bump right here? And if I look down, I actually have the, the uh, note letter value representing these, these uh, frequencies. Like for example, there's F here, F sharp and G. So I'm going to select my F sharp. What I'm going to do is during playback, I'm going to boost that and cut it to see if that's my problem area that I want to resolve. Okay, so in this example, let's say it's the F sharp. Now, another thing to keep in mind before we get, um, before we continue on is here on the gear icon in the sound editor window in the top left of the window, from the drop down, we have some options here. You can always choose to reset your spectrum. That means it's gonna take everything and put it back the way you found it. So if you get to a point where you're a little confused or feel you went too far, you always have that option handy. All right. so. Another thing to keep in mind when you're sweeping for frequencies is the overtones of that particular of, of that particular frequency. In other words, the F sharp. There isn't just one F sharp here. There's a whole series of them. And I believe that frequency is somewhere around 740 hertz. Uh, yeah, about 740 hertz. Now, I can affect just this one band or I can choose to affect them all. Now, all I have to do is double click on the F sharp and every one of the F sharps is selected in the frequency graph here. To deselect the ones I don't want to affect, for example, I can hold my shift key and just remove them from the group. All right. Now we can boost and cut these, sweep them out as a group. Let's do that.
Okay, so on my end, I now hear more of the warmth and body of the guitar and less of that high ringy, annoying tone that we were hearing. Now, the reason why I want to sweep that out before I do any mixing is because when I start adding dynamics to a, to a mix, you may be raising the level of some of these unwanted frequencies and that's just not going to be good. An easy way to A-B your work is here in the top right of the sound editor window, we've got a bypass, a global bypass button. So now that I've selected how many decibels I lowered these, uh, the, the group of frequency bands down, what I'm going to do now is literally just bypass and AB the sound of it using this function right here. Here's bypassed first, and then we'll AB it. And although it may sound like a real small difference, it really adds up because mixing is a cumulative process. And that's how you can utilize the sound editor feature now available since Melodyne 4 in your projects. If you ever come across a situation like this, you know the tools are right there within this program for you to use. I'm Carlo, and thanks for watching.